connected our Airtable account on the correct base to our template, you can see we now have the options over here. So if the screen isn't visible, again, remember just click on this block to get it expanded. So you can see you can change your Airtable base from here and you have the little refresh button if you're making any updates to the content in your Airtable base. You can simply hit this refresh to get a live update here. You can select which view you would like to display. So this is especially helpful if you have things that are approved or not approved, or you've set up uh, different views for you internally, and then you have one for the external facing site. You can pull in that particular view that you've already created in Airtable here, and then you can set up default views. So again, you don't have to do that. You can just leave these empty and just have the Airtable base. Um, but if you don't select a, a table and it has more than one table, it won't know what to display there. So just keep that in mind that you do need to have the base in the table, unless of course you only have one single table. Not relevant to our tutorial as this is a two-sided marketplace and you'll have multiple tables. Here you see you have options to sort. You can uh, change the items per page and items per row. Keep in mind that uh, the little information button here tells you you can only have four items per row if your filters are on top. So they're talking about these filters, which as we'll get to in the next section, you can adjust to be on top if you'd like more room for content across the screen. Next, we have conditional filters. Now we don't have any conditional filters set here on the main page, but if we come over to our side pages, we can see that we have pages created for London listings, Miami listings, and split listings. So let's just take a look at the London listings and the Airtable base here. And we can see that they have set up conditional filters in this template for us based on location and then selected London. Now again, as you can see on the home page this didn't need to be set up. So depending on what type of marketplace you're building, you may or may not need to set a conditional filter, but this is just one use case for it that you can create separate pages um, displaying that information. Let's go back to our homepage and continue to work through things. Next, we have the inline filters. So the inline filters refer to the filters that appear either on the side or at the top of this information coming from Airtable. So you can see when you connected your Airtable, this template already has the filter set up for us, but you can change the filter labels here and the filter by options. The options will already uh, pre-populate for you. And then here's where you would adjust where those options are displaying. Once you make those adjustments, then the four view will be enabled. Next, we have the search bar. The search bar can be toggled on or off depending on how you're using this marketplace. And you can adjust the placeholder text and then what options to search by. So you can use conditional filters and the search feature to help you here in terms of displaying things that only meet certain criteria. After our search, we come to the list item fields. So this list item fields is really describing the display of the information in the center of the screen. So we've connected the table We've set up our conditional filters and our search feature. Now we have to set up the fields to display the information from the Airtable base. Before we walk through these list item fields, let's take a brief look at our Airtable base so we understand where this data is coming from. From here, this is where the information is going to pull to display. So it's important that you understand what information you have here to be able to set up your not only your filters, but how the information is showing. So we have the thumbnail image here, we have the uh, monthly listing cost, we have the host, the host emails, the location. So we need to decide which information we're going to show on the high level screen, and then which information will be on the listing detail. We have the same setup for our hosts in terms of who's included as all and who is approved. And then you'll need to be sure that you set up the, the proper fields to pull for things that you would filter on. In this example, they use traits, but again, this might be, if it's a particular service, a service listing. Now that we know where that information is coming from, let's go back over to Softer to look at the item fields and how they display. Now 
now that we know where this information is coming from, that Airtable base, we can look at how we're displaying the information here on our list item fields. So as you can see, when you connect the base, it's going to pull in some, some information from the Airtable data already for you. Now, unfortunately, these types are not able to be changed once they're connected. So the easiest way to get around that if you don't like how things are looking or it's not linking up like you feel it should is to just toggle off that particular field setting and add a field. So for our use case here, it looks like things are matching up okay, but that is always an option for you if perhaps you want to create a button from a URL field instead of having the URL display, you can do that. So just a high level note to add there that you can't change the type here. You can adjust the type and the content type in your Airtable base. So let's take a look at that. So we can see that the, if we're looking at the field types here, this is an attachment. And that is what Airtable, or that is what software is looking at, what these field types are. So depending on what's set up, things may not come over correctly. It just depends on how advanced your base is. I would encourage that whatever table you're using to display and link together with software, you kind of have these types set up so that they'll they'll look correctly with software that might use a little bit of playing around and that's why this is a good template to start with because you know that these fields are corresponding correctly so just a little tip to keep in mind as you're working through let's go back over to software so as you can see these have linked up and when we connected our Airtable template and our Airtable base, we saw this already come through. But to make any adjustments, if you wanted that to display a different image, you would just click the little magic wand and either type here. And I like to have a split screen while I'm working at this, uh, unless you know your Airtable Air information right off the top of your hand. Uh, but you can use that little wand to simply search or scroll through and find the appropriate type of content that you're displaying there. You repeat that process with all of the default fields that came in. You notice there's a divider here. You can turn that on or off, depending on if you not if you want it there. If you want to adjust any of the settings, just like before, you need to click on the little style box, either for the entire grid to adjust the whole grid or for each uh, field as you expand it. So that's the basic list item fields that come over automatically. You can, as I said, also add additional fields to display. So you see when I hit this uh, add a field, now we have our field option type available. So you can scroll through the different options here, decide what's relevant. And as I said, if there's something that you want to add, for example, a button to be able to buy now or book now, and you had that as a URL in your Airtable base, you'll just need to connect that to an external URL there. Can also go to a page section or can open a page here in software. So lots of different options when it comes to adding fields that aren't necessarily um, pulling directly from that first initial link with your Airtable base. Next, we have just a few more options here in this block. The See More button down here is populated based on the top section where we set the number of items to display. You can adjust that label as you would any other label. You can adjust the empty state message here if there would be nothing that met the criteria of the filters. And then we have what happens on click. So right now we've just talked about kind of this first level screen, but we need to know if anything would happen if a visitor clicks on one of these sites and doesn't click on the reserve today, but maybe they just want more details. So for this particular template that opens up to the listing details page, you do have the option to toggle on the open a new page. And if we preview this, we'll see that this will bring us to our listing details screen. So this is a, another screen another page that we'll need to adjust in our template, but this information is pulling from the same Airtable base.